Jesse and Gerald are a married couple from New Orleans who are going through a rough patch. Jesse is a kind middle-aged woman while her husband is much older and selfish, they are currently headed to an isolated lake house in the countryside for a private weekend getaway, since the couple hasn't made love in months Gerald wants to make sure he performs really well, hence unbeknownst to his wife he has packed two handcuffs along with a pack of Viagra in his bag, throughout their journey they encounter several bad omens, they come across a starving stray dog feeding on a roadkill while the radio reports a break-in into a cemetery nearby. However the couple brush the signs aside and finally arrive at the beautiful lake house. Jesse goes in to explore and sees the fridge is already stocked up for them. She then brings out some meat to feed the starving dog they saw earlier. Meanwhile Gerald is in the bathroom taking a Viagra pill. He stares at himself in the mirror for a long time unsure if he can please his wife today. Outside Jesse is feeding the dog. She appears to be an animal lover and is really enjoying its company, but just then Gerald calls her making the dog run away in fear, he tells her the meat was too expensive to be given to a dog but they laugh it off and head inside for a fun time. Jesse tries to close the door behind her but Gerald can't wait any longer to have coitus so they leave it open. Jesse changes into a new night dress and removes its tag placing it on a shelf above the bed, when Gerald arrives in his underwear with the handcuffs Jesse is a bit taken aback but decides to go along. Following this he restrains both her hands on the bedposts, he then takes another pill of Viagra with some water leaving the glass on the same shelf above the bed. Once everything is set up Gerald tries to enact his wildest fantasy which would be making love while she screams loudly for help. However Jessie who has become very uncomfortable at this point refuses to comply. She tells him to stop and uncuff her but he continues to enact his sick fantasy. Angry Jessie yells at him and forces him to stop. This causes the two to get into a heated argument and Gerald accuses her of not even trying to rekindle their romance. Jesse tells him that these coitus games are not going to save their marriage and again asks him to uncuff her. However Gerald refuses to do so, he still wants to have coitus but when he gets closer to her Jesse bites his face repelling him away. Dejected Gerald breaks into tears and starts playing the victim, he believes that their relationship has fallen due to his incapability to make love, as he continues with his BS suddenly he feels uneasy and holds his chest, it turns out he is having a heart attack. Jesse can only watch in confusion as he stops breathing and collapses on top of her handcuffed self. At first she believes it is a part of his sick game but when all her attempts to communicate with him fail, she realizes that something is wrong. In denial she tries to wake him with her feet but only ends up making him fall and hit his head on the floor. Now Gerald is bleeding profusely. Terrified Jesse screams for help but in vain as there's no other soul for miles. Several hours pass by and attracted by the smell of Gerald's blood the stray dog enters the room. Jesse tries to scare it away but the defiant dog bites a chunk of her husband's arm and sits down to eat it. As a despondent Jesse breaks into tears, Gerald suddenly gets up and starts talking. Jesse is beyond relieved and asks him to uncuff her quickly. However he looks at his wound and blames her for feeding the dog earlier. As he speaks Jesse notices that the dead body is still laying down. She freezes in shock and realizes that the man talking to her is just her hallucination. Gerald berates her for wasting precious minutes calling for help when there's no one nearby. He also calls her a coward for running away from reality and creating alternate truths and manifesting ghosts. Fed up Jesse squeezes her hand out of one of the handcuffs and finally frees herself, but when she turns around to confront Gerald it is revealed that Jesse is still handcuffed to the bedposts. The sudden death of her husband and being stuck with his corpse has started getting to her head, in the next scene the two hallucinations start interacting with each other. Fake Gerald mentions that her hand won't fit through the cuff but fake Jesse believes that she can. She also encourages the real Jesse to give it a try. As time is running out for her, in a matter of a few hours she may die due to dehydration. It is getting dark outside and the dog hasn't stopped eating Gerald's flesh. Jesse has now become extremely tired and weak. She takes a moment to collect herself and tries to reach her phone on the side table but without success. Just then she notices the glass of water that Gerald had left on the shelf earlier. Jesse tilts the shelf board and slides the glass towards her right hand. She manages to grab it but is not able to bring it all the way to her mouth. With no options left she discusses the matter with her imaginary friends and they remind her of the tag she put on the other shelf. The plan works and Jesse is finally able to drink some water using the tag which she transforms into a DIY straw. Meanwhile the dog finishes eating a chunk of Gerald's arm and proceeds to fetch himself another one. Jesse again tries to shoo him away but her imaginary friend tells her not to waste her energy on the animal as she can't do anything about it. Jesse then falls asleep and later wakes up at night to find a tall, deformed, obscured figure in front of her whose arrival scares the dog away. The figure is carrying a bag full of human bones and trinkets. Scared Jesse closes her eyes shut and repeats to herself, you're not real. 
Gerald's hallucination also appears and tells her that maybe she is right, he speculates that the figure could be death waiting to take her. Gerald then starts talking in riddles and calls her mouse which seems to unsettle her. This triggers Jessie to remember her childhood when her father Tom used to affectionately refer to her as mouse. A 12-year-old Jessie is on a vacation with her family at a lake house, she never got along with her mother Susan and they always remained estranged, on that day Susan took her other children on a boat while Jessie stayed with Tom by the lake, once alone with her Tom suggests she sit on his lap as she did when she was younger, the girl innocently obliges but little did she know that her sick father is about to take advantage of her, behind her back he starts performing sinful acts, this incident has left a deep scar in Jessie's mind and she has still not gotten over it. Back in the present Jessie wakes up to intense pain due to her blood circulation being cut off. The fake Gerald asks her why she kept such a big secret from him and in reply Jessie says that she has many secrets, some of which are too scary to discuss, surprisingly the creepy man from earlier is nowhere to be seen, but the shady dog is back. Jessie closes her eyes again and starts reliving her childhood, this time she is in her room after returning from the traumatizing lake trip, Tom approaches her and says that he is ashamed of what he did, however he indirectly threatens her to never talk about it with anyone, he insinuates that it was her fault for enticing him so if she ever tells Susan about it she will probably blame her, this is the main reason why Jesse hasn't confessed about the incident to anyone, later in the flashback the whole family sits over for dinner where Tom tells everyone that he and Jesse had a lot of fun, he also mocks the little girl saying they will have a similar outing again, hearing this Jesse becomes so angry that she breaks a glass in her hand cutting herself, Back in the present Jessie wakes up from her dreams with an idea, she glares up at the glass kept on the plank. The imaginary Jessie approves of the plan but warns her that it will hurt, Gerald on the other hand thinks it is good because the blood will act as a lubricant, he warns her one last time to which Jessie responds that she does not have any other options, she gathers courage, breaks the glass and then severs her hand with it, once she starts bleeding she pulls her hand with all her might, this causes her unimaginable pain but she doesn't give up, finally her hand slips through the handcuff, but her skin comes off because of it, Jessie almost has a heart attack seeing her skin hanging off her hand but with no time to waste she moves over to the other side to free herself, it she tries to reach her phone, she does get it but realizes that it is already dead, despite the setback Jessie doesn't give up, she notices the key to her handcuffs and somehow manages to retrieve it, at last with the help of her mouth she finally frees herself completely, all her hard work has finally paid off, after this she immediately bandages herself to stop the bleeding, she also tries to drink some water but throws up because of the severe dehydration her body is experiencing, Jessie then proceeds to get her car keys but she passes out on the floor from blood loss and fatigue, a while later she wakes up to the dog biting one of her hands, after chasing it away she grabs her car key and proceeds to leave, when suddenly she notices the same giant figure from earlier, without thinking much she pulls out her wedding ring and gives it to him, the figure carefully watches it without saying a word, as he is deeply immersed in the ornament, Jessie gets in her car and leaves, after driving for a while she again starts hallucinating because of extreme fatigue, at first she sees her deceased husband waving goodbye at her, she also sees the tall figure in the backseat of her car, Jessie keeps dozing off because of it and eventually crashes onto a nearby tree, fortunately she is still conscious and alive, after she honks her car for a while some nearby people come and rescue her, six months after the incident we see Jessie in her office fully recovered from her head injury, her hand has also been partially mended after multiple skin grafts, it is revealed that she didn't tell the authorities what transpired at the lake house because she wanted to avoid the painful questions, in her statement Jessie said that she has severe amnesia because of which she doesn't remember anything from that fateful trip, she has gotten her insurance money and her life is back on track, things have gone back to normal for her, however every night before bed she goes back to the time she was trapped and gets disturbed with the same question, where did her wedding ring go? Did she really hand it to a ghost who she thought was her death? The question that even the cops or reporters at the scene failed to answer, with the insurance money Jessie has started a foundation to help young people recover from their traumas, one day she sees a peculiar looking man named Raymond Joubert on the front page of the newspaper, it is revealed that he is a notorious serial killer who murders people and strips them of their valuable ornaments, he has been accused of other heinous crimes like graveyard vandalism, cannibalism and even necrophilia, Joubert suffers from a rare disease called acromegaly, which results in the abnormal growth of various body parts, after he was arrested they searched his house and found his sisters and father dead, the latter was consumed partially which indicates that Joubert prefers male flesh, reading all this it finally dawns on Jessie that the ghost she saw at the lake house was none other than Joubert, she was left unharmed due to the fact that she is a female and also because she immediately surrendered her valuable ring to him, 
After Jessie finds all her answers she decides to visit the notorious killer, in the final scene she arrives at the court as Jubert's hearing is going on, a reporter reveals that he hasn't spoken a single word since he was arrested, however as soon as he sees Jessie he gets taken aback and says you are not real, turns out even he thought she was a ghost. Jessie also looks him right in his eye and starts seeing both her evil father and husband in him, then she confidently tells him, you're so much smaller than I remember. The movie ends as Jessie triumphantly out into the street with the sunlight gleaming down on her. Write your thoughts about this movie in the comments. Also don't forget to like and subscribe to help my channel. Bye.